for me, really important that people go and get results. They don't dilly-dally, you know. The way I like to see it is a bit like cooking a steak. Put it in a hot pan and get it back out again. We don't need to be, you know, oh, I need to do 20 weeks because this. Do it in 10. Get committed, get dedicated and get it done. Because for right, if you work, you turn up at nine o'clock, you're accountable. So, you know, your boss doesn't come get you out of bed. They don't ring you. You set the alarm, you go and you get it done. Go and get results that you deserve. Don't be half assed Don't kind of dilly dally. If I were you, in, in most people's cases, it serves them better. Keep ourselves accountable, take responsibility, and go hunt for those results. Hey, folks, and everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, Xander, as always. And in today's video, I have 10 questions here from my team, and they are regarding fat loss. Some of them are specific to me and this journey that we have been on together here. Some of them are to do with fat loss in general. Uh, as I'm in my deload week next week, we will cover the whole block, basically going over the analysis. I cannot wait to show you what has happened. Um, it's very, very exciting. I'm incredibly happy with how things have gone and I'm really looking forward to sharing some more with you. So the first question I've got here is, are you thinking about competing in bodybuilding? Now this is a really good question and it's a question I've had quite a lot on the gram, in my DMs and through uh, my clients as well. And before I answer this, you have to consider there's a lot that goes into competing. There's obviously the preparation for that, getting lean enough, going through a long enough diet phase, all of the resources that you need in order to do that. It's no small feat. And to get down to low levels of body fat, you obviously are compromising your health for a certain amount of time. You, especially if you're looking at females, you're obviously looking at your menstrual health. If you're looking at males, obviously you're looking at things like your libido, so that sex drive. And, and of course, other factors as well, sleep deprivation, all of those things come into it as well. The other factors to consider are things like energy levels, cognition, so you know, do I have enough energy to go about my day-to-day -day life? Do I have enough cognitive function? Is my brain working well enough? in order for me to do my job and serve my team well. Other considerations are, you've obviously got the training aspect of it, you're probably gonna to have to add in some cardio or you're gonna to have to do more steps, which is more time. On top of all of those things, you've obviously got posing practice. Combined are looking at kind of two to three hours a day, if not maybe closer to four, closer to the time when the, when the cardio ramps up. So competing is no small feat, not in terms of the psychological and physical aspect of it, and not in terms of the commitment level that you are gonna to have to go through in order to get into that shape in the first place. So to answer the question, no. I am not looking to compete in bodybuilding. And there's a few reasons why. The first reason is that for me, I am not doing this to compete against other people. I'm not doing this to get a trophy or a reward. That's not to say that people shouldn't do that. I don't care what other people do. If they want to do that, good for them. But for me and in the position that I'm currently in, I have absolutely no interest in putting my efforts against other people's. I am far more interested in seeing what I can do, how far I can push my physique, and quite frankly, how the process runs for me. For a lot of people, I think the first point of call is, oh, I'm going to get lean, I might as well compete. Whereas to me, I'm thinking, if I get lean, I might just do a photo shoot. I'll do a photo shoot, I'll throw some poses about, etc., um, and do it that way because for me at least in my current situation I see no need to step on stage and a get that level of lean and b to be quite honest compete against other people you know I am really doing this for me and a lot of people say that but then they step on stage and I kind of think to myself if you're really doing it for you get really lean do a photo shoot but if you're competing then the chances are you're not doing it for you I mean the whole term competing probably sticks up and I'm not saying that these people aren't doing the process themselves not at all these are just my opinions at the end of the day I used to be a professional athlete so it's not like I'm not competitive I'm one of the most competitive people you'll ever meet but I also know when I need to be competitive and when it just doesn't serve me and this is one of those situations where I just know it is not gonna serve me. The other reason, and this is probably the biggest reason for me to be honest with you, I'm not gonna go to those levels and let my team down like that, nor my business. I'm not willing to do that. And there are people who are, but to me, I work with a lot of people who have um, disordered eating behaviors, struggle with their psychology, and I know for a fact that I'm a great support system for those individuals, as well as the clients I have who I'm really trying to get the most out of. I'm pushing to the limit, and if I'm broken myself, if I don't feel like I have the energy to turn up for them on their check-in days or when they're having a bad day because I'm having a bad day, 
Now, don't get me wrong, I have bad days too, but I can't help those. Whereas if I were going to go to the levels I would need to go to compete, I would be putting myself in that position. That is not something I'm willing to do. I'm not willing to compromise my coaching. I'm not willing to compromise my clients' uh, level of service. And I'm not willing to compromise my business, to be honest. It's not something I would be willing to do. So, hey, yeah. I'm gonna get very lean, uh, but I, I'm not gonna compromise. So if it gets to the point where I can't think straight, I'll be pulling the plug straight away on this because it's not worth it to me and it's not worth it to everything I've worked so hard to build and the people who have trusted me with their journeys. Is it more important to eat before training during a deficit to maximize training intensity? Well, first and foremost, we should never be training fasted if we can help it. So there are obviously some circumstances where we can't, such as Ramadan, things like that. But even then, you can manipulate those factors, train at a different time of day to facilitate that training uh, when you are in a fed state. Now, the science is fairly clear on this. Carbohydrate is massively important and beneficial for a productive uh, training session. So why would you not eat before you train? Some people say, hey, I don't eat before I train because it doesn't sit well with me, I don't feel good. And to be quite frank, that's a load of rubbish. What doesn't work is the type of food you've tried. But, and then people say, oh, you know, I've tried everything. You haven't tried everything. You've tried two things. Pick something that digests very easily. So my go-to pre-workout is Cocoa Pops. They digest a dream for me. They're easy to eat and I never have any issues. So it's not about carbohydrate not working for you pre training session, it's about the foods that you've chosen in the past, perhaps they're too high fiber, perhaps the digestion of those foods isn't optimal for you. It's about manipulating those factors so they work. To the question, yes, it is super important because fundamentally you want to have glycogen in the muscles because obviously we want to be using that. That will also help us get a bit of a pump, which we know is beneficial for muscle growth. And carbohydrate will derive better performance. Better performance means we stand a much better chance of growing muscle, but definitely maintaining the muscle that you've earned in the maintenance phases or obviously the, uh, the gaining phases you've done beforehand. So to me, it's a no-brainer. Carbs every time, don't train fasted for hypertrophy training. On to question number two, how do you keep yourself accountable? That's a really good question. Two reasons. Firstly, I am very process and data based. So for me, I like to know exactly what I'm doing. I will plan it all out and then I will be picking up the data as I go. So when it comes to being accountable, there are two things at play here. The first one is that I make these videos every week. So if I just pulled the plug on it, there'd be a bunch of people who were like, hey, are you not dieting anymore? Like, what's happened? So there is a level of accountability that's given to me from this process. That's quite obvious. And there is, you know, certain pressure there to continue, but not enough to keep me accountable. It's just, <laughs> if anything, it's a pressure to keep the videos going so people don't think I've quit. <laughs> but certainly when it comes to accountability, I've always been someone who's been very committed to the goals that they set, sometimes to a fault, to be honest. For me, accountability actually is easy. It's really an easy thing. It's a simple thing of going and making conscious choices. Take, for example, I have a huge box of Haribo downstairs, uh, left over from my sister's baby shower. I love sweets. Anybody who knows me knows I love sweets. They are down there in that cupboard. My partner sometimes works from home, sometimes doesn't. There is plenty of opportunity for me to go and raid that sweet jar and eat them all. But the choice comes in and I know that choice. So I will ask myself, do I want this short-term pleasure, this bag of sweets or this pack of crisps? Or do I want to put all the hard work that I have been doing day in, day out into fruition by seeing the result that comes off the back of that? To me, that's a no-brainer. That's an absolute no-brainer. It's like, for example, some days I get very hungry and I just have to kind of smile because I think, yeah, this is the process. I signed myself into this. I knew what I was doing when I signed up to this. This is what I knew was gonna happen. I signed myself up to this. Fine, let's play, let's go. And so for me, getting to that point, eating myself out of that would basically be saying, I've put in all this hard work to build this up and now I'm gonna let that go. So for me, accountability is, is a simple factor of taking responsibility and not enough people do this. What they don't realize is that they have full responsibility for their goals once they've been set. They've got the responsibility to get up on time, their responsibility to go to bed on time, their responsibility to track the macros and do the things that they have committed to doing. That's really important. If you're committing to a process and you say, this is what I want, commit to yourself, commit to the process and go and get the result you deserve for the work you're about to put in. Because so many people 
put in the hard work and then they let themselves down by not keeping themselves accountable to their responsibilities. The responsibilities being your responsibilities yourself to maintain the efforts and the processes that it takes to, you know, to maintain and get the goal in the first place. This question was actually a two-part question and the second part of the question was and how difficult or easy do you perceive this to be? So I guess I've kind of already answered that point. I find it easy to be accountable to myself, not a problem at all um, because I know what I want to go and get. So it's a little bit like when people say, oh, I can't be accountable. You, you turn up to work every day, right? If you work, you turn up at nine o'clock, you're accountable. So, you know, your boss doesn't come and get you out of bed they don't ring you, you set the alarm, you go and you get it done. So I think people are very uh, decision biased with what they want to be accountable to and what they don't. And that comes down to responsibility, dedication, and of course, commitment to yourself and the goal that you set. The next part was with um, to this question, both with respect to knowing when to push on, but also knowing when to quit. This is a really good question. This is the best part of this question for me. So I set out originally in my first video, I said, I want to lose 18 pounds in total. That is the goal. I want to get down to 164. I decided that I was going to try and do that across 18 weeks. So one pound a week for 18 weeks. What happens if I did that early? I said I would probably pull the plug depending on how I felt. And I made that call back then, all those 11 weeks ago, based on how I believed I was going to feel had I have achieved that goal at this point. Sometimes quitting is the hardest point. And, and I worked really hard to change my mindset on this. I don't anymore see it as quitting. I see it as moving forwards. If I were to stop my diet in the next couple of weeks or in three, four weeks, whatever, I wouldn't see that as a quitting. I would see that as me moving forward to the next stage. Quitting for me would have to be if I'd have lost three pounds and didn't make any more progress and then just went, right, this isn't working, I'm out of here. So I can't really quit anymore. I, I, I've done a wonderful job. I'm really happy of the effort I've put in. So quitting, I can't do. However, knowing how far to push is a challenge. For me, it's about setting up a goal when you're in a good frame of mind. When I started this diet, I was in a very good frame of mind. I still am in a very good frame of mind, to be honest. But it's about not making rash decisions when you're not. So if you're really hungry, if you're really tired, it's not a good idea to go around making decisions about how long you're going to diet for. Because that's probably not going to be the most realistic time for you to be logical and methodical. So for me, I set it up at the start. I knew what I had to do. I knew where I was going. Now I'm making a decision at the moment on what to do next. I'm fairly certain I've nailed this decision and I will talk through this a little bit more probably next week. For me, that's about acknowledging where I am, where I've come from and how I get the most out of the next few weeks in a successful way. Not just going full steam ahead, I don't know what's gonna happen. It's about looking ahead and saying, okay, what's the likelihood that these things may happen? Or looking ahead and thinking, What's my expectation here? Is that a good time to stop? And most importantly, what do I have in the pipeline? November is very busy for me. Very, very busy weekends, lots of travel. Is it realistic that when I'm in the peak hunger and stressed out phase of my diet, that I should carry on then? Probably not. So I need to make a call on when I'm gonna pull the plug on this so I have a good enough exit strategy out so I can enjoy those weekends without being super hungry and super grumpy and also super food focused as well. How do you handle cravings? I had a fantastic chat with one of my clients about this just earlier. She's just in a mini cut at the moment and was asking me, you know, I'm really craving some sweet things. What do I do? The key factor to get your head around here isn't the sweet part of it, it's why you're hungry in the first place. If you don't have huge amounts of hunger, the chances are you're not gonna have massive amounts of cravings. So the first thing to hit the nail on the head here is, why am I hungry? How do I become more satiated? So there are two key words here, satiety and satiation. Satiety is what brings a meal to the end. That's intra-meal fullness. That's we're eating away and we're just kind of like, oh, I've got three potatoes left and some veg. And, oof, I don't fancy it. I'll leave that. That's satiety. That is where we cannot finish the meal, for example, because we are super full. Satiation, however, is post-meal fullness. So satiation is essentially where we've finished eating and we don't need to then eat for two or three hours afterwards because we are so well satiated from the meal. So what we would look at is, okay, why are we getting these cravings? Is it because actually the meals we're having aren't filling us up enough? 
The other thing to look at is what is known as the food hyperpalatability reward mechanism. And that is essentially saying the nicer the food, the more we want to eat of it. And we all know that this is true. Put it this way. If I were to put in front of you 15 white potatoes boiled no salt versus 15 cookies, which are you going to go through? Nine times out of 10, we will go through the 15 cookies because the body loves it, the brain loves it, it's a lovely food. It hits all the right spots, it hits all the right triggers and the brain will be able to just keep taking those in. When it comes to, obviously, white potatoes, they are boring and they are bland. So what happens is we get bored of eating them, which gives us satiety and also a lot of satiation. The thing to then look at is, okay, maybe I'm eating too many sweet things. If I dull those down a little bit and I generally make my meals a little more bland, could I effectively help myself with my cravings? Absolutely. Now, if you're like me, I have a very sweet tooth. So there are a couple of things that I have through the day that are very sweet. For example, in the yogurt you've seen me make tons of times, I put a sweetener in that, which turns that from something which is typically quite bitter into something that's very sweet, very dessert-like. But it's not actually sweet in the sense of like a chocolate bar would. So it's very important to look at actually is this for me at this point probably worth the sacrifice in not having say a protein bar because the sweetness and the chocolatey nature of it makes me want to eat more and instead of filling me up it makes me more hungry tips for staying on track when you are dieting and want to stick to your calories i've decided to break this down into three tips three key points the first one is planning if you plan out your daily meals essentially you are giving yourself the biggest head start on a not turning up to a meal and thinking shit what am i going to eat and b getting ahead of the game in the sense of planning out things means you're going to have less food focus because you're not thinking about food all the time but you're also going to have a head start in the in, in the in the case that when you get to the meal, all you have to do is weigh the stuff out. You don't have to do anything else. Just you already know what you're having, weigh it out. My second point is on consistency. Consistency is the most important thing, to be honest. Consistency and adherence for fat loss is so, so important. And so what you can do to make life easier for yourself is actually create basically the same meals for your lunch and your breakfast. This is what I've done this whole time. I've had the same breakfast and same lunch pretty much every day except for at the weekend. So Monday to Friday, when I'm in my normal work routine, I have the same breakfast and same lunch pretty much every day. The thing that does change is my dinner, and that's because I eat dinner with my partner still. When the dieting gets a lot tougher, it might be that I start to move away from having dinner with her, and I start making my own dinners, purely because they might need to be a little bit more macro-friendly, a lot more bulky, and I don't expect her to sit at the dinner table with me and have nothing but chicken and veg. That's, no, she wouldn't do it anyway and I wouldn't want her to. You know, at the moment we have very flexible dinners, we have chicken curries, we have bolognese, we have chili, we have fajitas, having fajitas tonight, very nice. I do still plan them, you know, if I were to show you my, my fitness pal now, what you would see is that all my meals are already written in, because this morning, what I did is I said to Katie, hey look, what do you want to have for dinner tonight? Yeah, we'll have fajitas, great, cool. Now, she might have wraps with hers, I might just have some boiled potato, for example, and it's all about making that work in the whole grand scheme of both our relationship, but also my goals. Why does this matter? Because fundamentally, it relieves so much stress. People who track meal to meal get to their dinner and then go, shit, I've got 200 calories left and I need 35 grams of protein. So essentially, by the time you've eaten that, you've got about 50 calories left. That's not fun, that is not fun. So when people say, oh, you know, it's over restrictive, it's, it's this, it's that, Really, what we're doing in being more proactive with our prep and being more proactive with our planning is allowing more flexibility because I don't get to a meal and go, shit, all I can have is chicken or a protein shake. I get to a meal and I've got a lovely meal ahead of me. You know, I've got full fajitas, I've got cheese, I've even got some creme fraiche with that. And to be quite frank, yeah, I have potato instead of wraps, but that's because potato is far more satiating. So I can enjoy a meal I love and feel full for it at the same time. Consistency and adherence become so much easier when you nail those points. Now, the third point here is definitely the most important, and that is the expectations you have of yourself. When it comes to dieting and tracking and things like that, I personally find it's much better to be slightly more aggressive in the sense of 
I have a 12 week diet, I'm gonna really commit to this 12 week diet so I can see the results start to roll in and I can see the weight coming off and that's gonna motivate me as I go. Of course, for some people, they're going out every weekend, they're going out during the week and they're trying to balance these things. These are people who usually end up dieting for six or seven months. If it were me, I would rather commit and say, right, I'm doing 12 weeks, I'm gonna get this done. Say, for example, in the, in the first 10 weeks of my diet, I lost 12 pounds. For, for some people, that's like six to eight months worth of work. But I knew what I was doing and I knew what I was committing myself to. I chose a space of time where I didn't have a huge amount of social events. I had a couple of weddings and obviously we had a little holiday break, but I worked around them. I knew they were coming and I used the time I had wisely. I put my foot down when I could and I relaxed when I needed to. Boom. That's how I think people are more successful with fat loss. I think managing the calories on a day-to-day -day basis and adhering becomes far easier when you see you're getting results, but you only get results once you really put your foot down with the adherence. So I would really work hard to adhere strongly to start with at least, but not put pressure on yourself. We're not being like, oh my God, I need to have one gram of this or that. It's about putting pressure on yourself to commit to the process that you've set up. So if that's eating between 1800 and 1900 calories do that i'm not saying eat 1800 bang on i'm saying eat in the range just stick there the pressure is to maintain a process that works for you question number eight when i saw your physique i was like why not stop there with fat loss and maintain the physique on reversing to normal calories i wonder why you dive really deep into the deficit to possibly gain back some again so firstly, when I'm dieting like I am now, I'm doing this because I want to gain afterwards. I'm actually going to maintain for a little bit uh, just because I want to. I want to do a photo shoot and I want to be able to maintain this for a little while and then I'm going to start gaining again. But fundamentally, the way I see it is that naturally when you diet down, you're going to gain a little bit back anyway. So I'm going to go and really push the limits for two reasons. A, I really wanna see what I'm capable of, to be honest. I wanna go the length, I wanna see how much I can do, and I wanna push myself. That's something that I love. And like I said earlier in this video, competing against other people doesn't do it for me, but competing against me, seeing what I can really do, testing my own mindset out, that's something I really am passionate about. So I'm keen to do that. It's not about a certain physique for me. It's not about getting to a point and being like, yeah, this is great. For me, this is a process, a bit like a machine where I'm going, right, I am here now. This is where I want to be. This is what I need to do to get there. So I'm going to keep going until I get to that point. Now, for me, there's not going to be any rebound. I'm not going to get to that dieting point and then just go and smash a load of takeaways. I might have a pizza just as a, just as a final uh, post photo shoot pizza. I think that's, I think that's fine. Um, but the point I'm making is more so that there will be a little bit of gain from that bottom point. So if I go a little bit below that, when I get that reset and I gain a couple of kilos, maybe off the bottom with glycogen and water refilled, I'll have a wicked physique. It'd be exactly where I want to be. So for me, it's about A, pushing the limits of what I'm capable of and my testing my mindset. And B, I really want to see what's underneath all of this, not just some of it. So I'm, I'm keen to push on. Last but not least, what's your best piece of advice for someone starting their cut? This is a good question. I actually have um, not written any answers for these. I've literally just written the questions down because I wanted to see what, I don't know if you can see that. I literally just wanted to see what I would come up with um, here on the spot and not have this like written down as almost like a PowerPoint for you. Hopefully it's been more entertaining than a PowerPoint, um, he says. So, What's my best piece of advice for someone starting a cut? Again, I don't have a singular piece of advice here. I would say three things. And I'll take you all the way back to my first video because I did every single one of them. The first one is plan. What are you planning to do? How long are you planning to diet for? How long are you planning to um, maintain the entire process? So obviously the diet I spoke about ending in possibly five weeks time, but then a two week exit strategy. So I'm not thinking, cool, when I finish this diet, loads of calories, I'm thinking, ah, the job isn't done until I get to the end of that exit strategy. So it's a total of 17 weeks or 18 weeks. Then it's about how much do I wanna lose in that time? It's setting up the realistic expectations at that point of right, this is how much I want to lose. This is how much I'm going to, you know, this is how long I'm going to go for. And so this is how much I will need to eat basically to start with to get the ball rolling. That would probably be my, my kind of first piece of advice. My second piece of advice would be be diligent. 
go and get results that you deserve. Don't be half assed don't kind of dilly-dally. If I were you, in, in most people's cases, it serves them better to just chill out on the socials a little bit and really commit themselves. Most of the time, it's very easy to do. I went to a wedding last weekend, no problem at all. And I still managed to, you know, I didn't go all out on my calories or anything else. I enjoyed the food that was there. I enjoyed the day, it was wonderful. And it's, for me, really important that people go and get results. They don't dilly-dally, you know. The way I like to see it is a bit like cooking a steak. Put it in a hot pan and get it back out again. We don't need to be, you know, oh, I need to do 20 weeks because of this. Do it in 10, get committed, get dedicated and get it done. Because for most people, the reason they don't get results is because they go too slowly. The reason that JLX, why we set a minimum loss rate per week is because we don't want people going too slowly, losing motivation, losing the will to live with it and then just going, this is just not working. We would rather push people a little bit harder and say, right, let's go and hunt these results. Let's get these results, let's get this weight off, because that motivates people. And then they see that, hey, yeah, I'm only eating 1,700 calories or 1,300 calories, but I am making some seriously good results, and that's motivating. So we have to balance that as well. And so I guess my point number two would be commit to yourself, get it done, set the goal, commit to it. My third and final piece of advice, and I say this to everyone, is it's a practice. Treat it like a practice. We're not after perfection. I haven't been perfect through this process. I wouldn't want to be either. And I said this to one of my clients yesterday and when she said to me, oh, how have you done this so easily and so well? She'd been watching these videos, so hello, by the way. Um, <laughs> and I said to her this, I've made so many mistakes. I have made pretty much every mistake there is to make in my time of dieting and gaining. And the best thing I could ever encourage you to do would be to do the same and learn the same as well. Take the lessons from the mistakes you make and make them better the next time. I said the reason this dieting phase has been so easy for me is because I took all of the mistakes and I have managed to execute them perfectly in this process. And when I say perfectly, I don't mean without setting a foot wrong. I mean when I look back over the whole process, sure, I could pick up points and be like, oh, didn't do this, didn't do that, missed this step or missed that macro. I don't care because that micromanaging of the system is what leads to such great fatigue buildup and eventually just tires you out and you're no good to nothing at the end of that. So the, the key point, I guess, for this one here is simply to practice. And what I mean by practice is win yoga, you don't talk about winning or losing or win, uh, success or failure. You talk about practice. I'm going to yoga practice. I'm going to gradually get better over time. So no matter where you start, no matter the macros, the steps, the training, look to get a bit better. If, if your target is 120 to 140 grams of protein and you get 98, can we get 110 the next week? Can we get 120 the next? Over the first six weeks, can we get into that range? Putting yourself under so much pressure in the beginning to try and nail it often is what puts people off. It fatigues them so much that they break. How do we ease ourselves into the process? A lot like what I did, but keep ourselves accountable, take responsibility and go hunt for those results. You get all those things right, you'll have a blast and you'll make some really, really good progress as well. There we have it folks. If you've made it this far, I wanna say a massive thank you to you. I appreciate that was a much longer video than maybe it was shaped up to be. But like I said at the start, I really wanted to give you folks a, a real idea of not just answering the questions, but the things that go behind it, the thought processes. And of course, the mechanisms as well. You know, it's one thing asking a question of what's you know the best advice on fat loss, but there are many different people in the world. There are many different circumstances that those different people are in. And so I guess a takeaway from this would be that not all of these points will relate to you. Some of them you might think I'm absolutely not relating to that at all. The important thing is to look at it on the whole, look at the, the vaster scale of things and kind of think, you know, actually what are the key takeaways for me? It's not whether the points I'm making are right and wrong for you. It's about, hey, that, that point there was brilliant for me. I'm gonna take that and I'm, I'm gonna do more of that. Or that point there, not necessarily for me. Great point, I understand, but yeah, I'm gonna focus on these three. So what I want you to do is really take the points away that you wanna focus on the most and implement them. I'm really excited to see how you guys get on. If you've got any questions, stick them in the comments below. And of course, as always, I will answer those next week in my big update. Speak to you then. Take care now, bye-bye.